Hello everyone and welcome back to the sessions on financial management. In this class of financial management, we are continuing with a very, very important topic that is long term financing decisions. This is the third lecture on long term financing decisions. And today in this class, we are going to get started with a very, very important concept again that is termed as cost of capital. So friends, let me remind you one thing. We are talking about arrangement of finance, arrangement of funds on a long term basis, long term financing decisions. We have already talked earlier that arranging each component of fund is never going to happen free of cost. When you are arranging money, it is basically somebody else's resources that you are using. So obviously you have to reward that counterparty. Just imagine there will be someone who is buying shares or debentures of the company and that person is typically an investor. An investor has to be offered some income in the form of certain rate of return. So if it is a debt instrument like debentures or bonds, the company will promise a certain interest rate. If it is preference share, the company would promise a certain rate of preference dividend definitely subject to availability of profit and if it is uh, equity shares then basically equity shares are the owners of the company company definitely will have obligation to generate profit for the owners in simple words even though your money is getting contributed from your own owners that is equity shareholders still we cannot consider that capital is arranged free of cost. There is always a cost incurred. So here I would bring one small important issue that is something called opportunity cost of capital. For example, you are one of the prospective investor in my company. You are one of the prospective investor in my company. Prospective investor means you have not bought any shares or debentures of my company. You have yet to buy. Because you have yet to buy those shares and debentures. And you have made up your mind to purchase equity shares of this company. And be equity shareholder. Now before investing into this company. You might have other opportunities, right? Of course, there will be lots of opportunities. Suppose there is an opportunity where you can generate 15% rate of return. If you are investing in my company, you are foregoing that opportunity and therefore you would want a minimum rate of return of 15% from my company. That is your expectation which would eventually become my obligation. So whether it is debt, preference share, equity share, retained earnings, any component of capital, it will come up with certain cost and that is what we call as cost of capital. Now friends, uh, determining cost of capital is a very, very important task. Why? Because your optimal capital structure. Do you remember one thing that we have talked in the previous class? While we are dealing with this chapter long term financing decision, we have learned leverages, we have learned capital structure decisions. We have talked about optimal capital structure and today we are talking about cost of capital. Your objective over here is to design an optimal capital structure means to have an optimal mix of these four components of long term finance debt, preference share, equity share, retained earnings. Now, one angle to look at the optimal capital structure could be this angle, this tangent that is cost of capital. So an optimal capital structure could be such a capital structure which can minimize the overall cost of capital. So whether the cost of capital could be minimized or not, how would you know unless you learn how to determine cost of capital. Determining cost of capital therefore becomes very very important. Now determining cost of capital will happen in two stages. In the first stage, 
you would determine cost of capital for each individual component of capital for debt you will compute cost of debt for preferences you would compute cost of preferences for equity you would compute cost of equity for retained earnings you would compute cost of retained earnings so you are going to compute cost of each individual source of finance as an individual cost of capital that will be the first stage in the second stage you will be taking weighted average of all these individual cost of capitals and that weighted average would give you overall cost of capital so determining cost of capital itself will pass through two stages and with each individual component of cost of capital you have to learn specific attributes of that particular component and accordingly determine the cost of capital for the same this is going to be little longer but the journey is going to be extremely interesting i would just again request you to maintain complete patience and whatever i am explaining try to understand and when i am showing you some calculative examples try to understand and write down those examples when i am giving you some important theory over here on screen without missing a single word write down that entire theory and while you are writing your attention should be on what you are writing so whatever i have discussed by far let us first write up some theory on that same aspect so please start writing some important theory over here under the heading cost of capital of course the arrangement of long term finances obviously cannot be free of cost therefore there is always cost incurred for arranging the capital the term cost of capital can mean individual cost of a component of capital or overall cost of capital for individual capital components the following costs will be determined number 1 cost of debt number 2 cost of preference share number 3 cost of equity and number 4 cost of retained earnings let us move ahead and continue writing further once the overall cost of individual components of capital as stated above is determined the firm can finally determine its overall cost of capital such overall cost of capital will become the basis of discounting rate for investment decisions such discounting rate is extensively used in capital budgeting and long term investment decisions the objective of a firm will be to minimize its overall cost of capital and cost of capital will depend on the capital structure therefore the capital structure decisions are the basis of cost of capital incurred by the firm let us have some important discussion on what we have stated over here if you can recall when we were learning long term investment decisions or particularly the topic capital budgeting do you recall what did we learn over there over there we had been dealing with a discounting rate which was expected rate of return for the company that time i had been telling you that don't worry about this discounting rate thing we will learn what is the source of this discounting rate it basically indicates cost of capital for the company i'm sure you are able to recollect that conversation between us and now time has come to understand how to determine cost of capital but the outcome you have already learned and once you determine something called as cost of capital that cost of capital will become expected rate of return for the company because that would be the minimum rate of return that the company would want our cost of capital will include the cost towards all the four components of capital that means the cost that you are going to incur towards equity even that is considered so the profit that is going to the hands of shareholders that is equity shareholders even that is forming part of cost of capital so if your overall cost of capital is 
for the company then for the company that becomes a minimum expected rate of return in any investment project that it is analyzing it would expect a minimum of 15 percent rate of return nothing lower than that and that is why it is identified as a cutoff rate so i'm sure you people could connect the point between long-term investment decisions and long-term financing decisions so let us uh, write some more notes I'll just repeat one thing that what we are now going to learn is about two different stages of determining cost of capital first stage where you would determine the individual components of cost of each capital for example cost of debt cost of preference share cost of equity and the like and at the later stage second stage you are going to take the weighted average of all these to convey that weighted average as if it is the overall cost of capital so time for us to write some more notes over here so please uh, pay attention on the screen and write up these notes coming up determining cost of capital this process requires calculation in two stages number one determining individual cost of each component of capital and number two determining overall cost of capital the overall cost of capital is the weighted average of individual cost of capital obtained from stage one Therefore, the overall cost of capital is also known as weighted average cost of capital, in short WACC.